So one of the top questions I get all the time is how do I build my EB1A profile? In this video, we'll be covering three profile building opportunities if you're a tech professional or software engineer and how you should go about approaching these opportunities to get even more EB1A profile building opportunities. The general attitude I see from a lot of people when they're approaching profile building is that they think it's just about checking a box and not really about stepping stones to even bigger opportunities that can eventually help improve not only the strength of their profile, but also the final merits of their EB1A case. So in this video, we'll be covering three profile building opportunities and how you should go about approaching them to land some of those bigger opportunities that could then really help strengthen your profile. And keep in mind, it's fine to just attend some of these conferences and events that I'll be talking about. It's not necessary to, for example, get a speaker position or get a judge role right away. You can just simply attend these events and talk to the people who may then eventually refer you to some significant judge roles or some significant speaking opportunities. It's about making those connections in person that will help you land some of those bigger profile building opportunities. Also, for those of you who are looking for more profile building opportunities, I'm now working on a database of profile building opportunities organized by industry, and I'll be featuring this spreadsheet of opportunities and continually updating this spreadsheet every week on my newsletter. So if you want access to that database, you'll be able to find that through my newsletter and link in the comments and also in my video description. But back to the video. So yeah, let's get right into these three opportunities. The first one is Developer Week. It is one of the largest developer conferences that is happening happening in a couple of months. Then there's ODSC, Open Data Science Conference, and there's one for different regions of the US. I'll be covering the East Coast one, and then finally Tree Hacks, which is Stanford's premier hackathon, and one of the largest collegiate hackathons in the US. So Developer Week is, and I'll be going through some of the websites for these opportunities. So Developer Week is, I mean, it's pretty obvious what it is. It's the world's the largest developer conference and engineering expo and conference. And it's something that you should definitely consider attending if you're a software engineer, because you will be around lots of people who want to learn about the newest things in software engineering. You will also be around many top developers and a lot of you come to me and ask, how do I get into this conference? How do I get into this? How do I get into this committee? How do I get into this IEEE committee or ACM committee? Well, a lot of these people are going to be in places like Developer Week. You're going to be seeing a lot of these people, not the exact people you want, but then definitely the kinds of people you want to be talking to if you are interested in eventually speaking at some of these top conferences, if you are interested in eventually serving in top committees or joining top member organizations, you should definitely be going to things like Developer Week. So what I want to cover about Developer Week, I mean, all of, the, all of this you can just find on their website, but say you want to speak at Developer Week. Well, they definitely have a call for speakers so right now they're only accepting speakers on a rolling basis. So for these conferences in general, where there are just so many attendees and so many things to organize, you want to apply as soon as the call for speakers is announced. So usually it's like a couple of months before the conference is set to take place. But even if you don't end up getting a speaking opportunity at developer week, I mean, they're still accepting speaking opportunities they're still accepting submissions on a rolling basis. Even if you don't get one of these speaking opportunities, you can still volunteer at Developer Week. That is what I saw on their website. If you, it's actually not very, it's, it's all the way under about, but under about, you can actually fill up a, fill out a volunteer form and sign up as a volunteer. And not only can you potentially, and this applies to a lot of conferences, not only can you get a reduced rate or sometimes even get in for free, you can also get that elevated status that will help you then talk to some of the speakers who will be presenting at Developer Week or some of the people who will be attending and doing workshops. You'll be able to 
get that insider look into a lot of these events that will then give you the ability, the, the access to make the connections that you will need to then land some of those bigger opportunities that you want to be looking into eventually, like speaking at top conferences or serving at top member organizations on committees, on boards, you'll be getting access to a lot of these people just as a volunteer. So definitely consider volunteering at Developer Week, if not speaking. I mean, it's great if you can speak, but even volunteering is a great way to get started. And this goes for all conferences too, not just Developer Week. Moving on to ODSE East. So this is a one of the biggest data science conferences in the world. And I think this year's well, next year's topic is going to be big on AI. So this is definitely something you want to look into, especially if you work in AI and you want to build a strong profile around AI. And again, for this type of conference, there are again, always um, speaking opportunities. So you can still submit an application to be a speaker since there's still five months before the five, six months before the actual conference. So as I said, you want to be, you want to be applying for speaking opportunities as early as possible for some of these top conferences because a lot of people will be applying. And if you don't want to speak, maybe you just you're just getting started, you can still attend as an attendee, or in some cases you can even volunteer. So for some reason. So again, for a lot of these top conferences, they're always looking for volunteers. If you scroll down, I'm not sure why the volunteer section is so hidden in on this website, but I'm just trying to find it now too. But I did come across it just now. So let's see. Um, can I volunteer at this event? under other general questions. So ODSE volunteers are an integral part of the success of each ODSE conference. They are an extension of our core team and act as ambassadors to our community. For more information, submit your application via form or visit ODSE Boston volunteer. So it's possible to volunteer at ODSE. Not sure why they make it so hidden on the website, but if I, I looked at this form and I didn't really see a form at all, just linked to this part of the website, but if you, for things like this, where it's not really obvious how you can volunteer, you can always just send them a message. You can always just send them an email and show that you're interested in volunteering and ask what the next steps are. That is something you can always do, not just for this kind of conference, for any kind of event or conference or even meetup, just offer to volunteer and offer to contribute how you can with your expertise or just with your time with organizing events. So ODSC is the another big opportunity you want to be looking at, and it is the second opportunity that we are, and it is the second thing on our list. Moving on to the third thing, which is Stanford's hackathon. So this is, so Stanford's premier hackathon, the country's brightest engineering students are flown to Stanford's campuses, campus to build solutions to the world's largest challenges for 36 hours straight. Join us for 11th year to dream and build the future. So this is the kind of hackathon you want to attend, you want to judge, or just attend and see if you can help as a mentor, because you are getting access to some very top engineering students, a lot of whom might actually be doing research that you might to want that you might want to partake in. So as you know, publishing papers can help your EB1 case, especially if you plan on going for authorship. And collaborating with some students who are working on these top papers who are working on say some research or are looking to publish papers can be a great way to publish papers on your own. So you can again judge or mentor. So they have this form here that you can fill out, but even outside of that attending just to help as a volunteer speakers too. So you can, so just applying and not you don't have to be a speaker. You don't have to be a judge for this hackathon. You can just be a mentor or even volunteer. And this can be a great way to meet some top engineering students 
in the country and also meet other top professionals who are doing this kind of thing and may also be doing more hackathons in the near future and may then be able to introduce you to the people who are looking for speakers, for judges, for hackathons or even conferences. So that is, yeah, that's Stanford Tree Hacks. But just going back to, let's talk a bit about the mentality you should be developing when it comes to finding some of these opportunities, to pursuing some of these opportunities. So when you go to an event, so let's say you go to an event, lots of top professionals. So if you know that there'll be a lot of top professionals at the event, you should be trying to help them. And you should be learning about them. And then seeing if there is fit between what they need and what you can offer. A lot of people who talk to me seem to have this this preconception, this this assumption that they can just go in and ask someone for a reference for a top conference or a speaking opportunity without even talking to the person and learning about their background. They think they can just do that right off the bat. And that is how you get into the top conferences as a speaker, how you get into the top organizations as a board member, as a committee member. But that is so far from what you should be actually doing. The first thing you should be doing when meeting any top professional, the first thing you should be doing when meeting any top professional is you should be offering to see if you can help them and also learn about their background. What are they about? What kind of work are they doing? When what kind of work are they doing outside of their workplace? And how does that relate to what you can offer? A lot of these top professionals definitely know people who are looking for top professionals to help with events, to help with organizations. They just don't know you enough so that they can just refer you to something because again, it is their reputation on the line. And it goes for a lot of these conferences too. And it, it applies to all the opportunities that I just talked about. Don't just go in and say, this is me, this is my background, give me this opportunity. You should be going in and presenting what you can offer, what you have done, and how you can help that specific conference that specific organization. And that comes down to understanding the work they do. So for ODSC, for example, they try to cover the latest developments in AI. Talk about then how you have worked on the latest developments in AI, how you have worked on projects that relate to certain developments that they are looking for papers on. That can be a great way to start a conversation where you then talk about how you can help them because they know that their attendees are going to be interested in this specific AI development where you have done a lot of work. So notice that there's a fit, there's a fit aspect. You have to make sure what you can offer fits what a top conference is looking for, what a top organization is looking for. And this goes back down to the individual level too. When you're talking to top professionals, don't just ask for things without understanding what you can offer them and how that relates to what they need. And it could be something very specific. So the more specific you are about what you can offer and the questions you ask them about what they need, the better your chances of creating this fit so that they introduce you to some of these top conferences, to some of these top organizations. So that's just a bit about how to profile build in general. And these are just three opportunities, three opportunities for building your profile. So these are just three opportunities that you may want to look into in the next few months to build your EB1A profile if you are a tech professional or if you are a software engineer.